On the sales exam, it's 150 questions. You've got to get 105 right. So what we say in class is 105 is 100%. So given that, that student, that one person, can act, does have room to guess on at least 30 questions. So listen, Mac, I'm glad you're here today. Well, today we have Mac Namora, one of our great instructors here at US Realty Training. He does a fantastic job with those taking the classes, the, the prerequisite classes, and the crash course. After you get your uh, three certificates, it's important, of course, Mac, to consider taking a crash course. That's big time, huge uh, advantage for these students. So I want to discuss that today with the, with the audience, those who are planning on getting their license, those who have already received their three certificates. The next big step is that state exam and passing that state exam. Now that step between those three certificates and the state exam, that time period is crucial. Would you agree? Absolutely. So what I want to do today, Mac, is share with the audience, those who are in that, in that phase, in that, in that stage of I got my three certificates or I'm going to have my three certificates soon, what to expect? What should they do? And I think a crash course is fantastic. So I'm glad you're here today. You've been with US Realty Training now almost five years. How's it gone for you? Amazing. Yeah? Amazing. I love this. I love the product. What do you like about it? It's simple, it's concise, and it gets the job done. You enjoy teaching? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's get straight to it as far as the, uh, the students, right? They got their three certificates. They earned them. Yay, you know, they went through your course, Mac, and, they, and you're proud of them, and they're excited because they're, they're on their way to this new career. But not quite yet. They still have to pass the state exam, right? Do you recommend they take a crash course? Hands down. Hands down. And the reason why is this. Most people look at the state exam as if it was a high school or college exam. And you can't look at the state exam as that. You have to have strategy behind it. So in the crash course, we take everything that you've studied and we then implement strategies for you such that now you're going in with more tools than the average person would have taking the state exam. I'm glad you brought that up as far as they, they think it's a high school exam, because it really isn't. It can be a challenging exam. Um, a lot of them, a lot of students believe that if you go in there memorizing concepts, right, memorizing vocabulary, that they'll have it made in the shade. That's all it consists of. What's the difference between studying, memorizing these concepts, memorizing terms uh, versus really understanding concepts? Is there a difference? There is a difference. So you would memorize information such as how many square feet are in one acre. 43,500 square feet are in one acre. That's something you have to memorize. Or what year was the state of California inducted into the United States? That's something you have to memorize. Concepts, on the other hand, would be something to the effect of what happens when an accepted offer has been submitted to escrow? How many days does uh, the buyer have to submit their EMD, earnest money deposit. Um, what are contingency dates and so forth? Those are all concepts related to real estate that one needs to understand. Now, those type of questions typically are questions taken from the practice, from the practice course, from the principal's course. Um, but you're right. The terminology ones, uh, either you know it or you don't. The other questions, there's a lot of analytics involved. You have to analyze. You have to reason your way through the to the correct answer, right? So, and you teach this kind of stuff. Absolutely. You know, the state exam is very. Uh, it favors scenario-based questions. So it'll say buyer A did something with buyer B, and they purchased real estate. Now, how would buyer B handle this this situation? And the student will need to know the concept that they're referring to in order to pick the right answer. Right, and those, are, those questions can be tricky, yes, they right? Can. They give you a, really, a real life scenario. And now you, as, as a possible agent in the future, have to think, well, what am I supposed to do here, right? And uh, I'm glad you go over that in the class, because that's important to know, because a substantial amount of those questions are 
uh, scenario based. Yeah. Um, do you get a lot of questions or a lot of feedback from the students when they're in the classroom regarding questions like that? Is there any, um, what is your style in capturing the student's attention, capturing that they understand what you're teaching them? How do you do it? So I think, first of all, at the very beginning of a crash course, we lay the fundamentals out. We lay what you can expect from me, what I can expect from you, and so forth. But as the course is progressing, I will take just several different strategies in so much as I will go over with students the question, literal questions that we know are on the state exam. We'll go over those in class. But I'll also start to share stories about my own real estate career. I'll start to show students the type of mindset one needs to have in real estate. Um, I'll make sure there's laughter involved in the course because I see so many students study, overstudying. And when you overstudy, you're basically feeding this conversation that you're not enough. And you have to go into the state exam being confident. So the whole objective of the crash course, again, is to build one's confidence. You can't go into the, crash, uh, the state exam as a victim. And so that's one of my objectives is to leave the student with their own confidence so that when they do go into the state exam, it's a done deal. They passed. All right. You, you, you mentioned just now, you said a really crucial word. You said mindset. The mindset and how important it is to have the right mindset. Can you expand on that? I mean, going into a state exam can be nerve-wracking, man. You know, it, it, could be, it could be intimidating. I remember when I took my state exam and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? There's a lot of information up here. So your mindset has to be there. Can you expand on how important that mindset is? Yeah. Mindset, I think in real estate, is what divides the successful real estate agents to the not so successful real estate agents. What I can teach anyone how to, how to write an RPA in 30, 30 minutes, but why they don't do it every day is a, is, is a different story. Got it. It's the mindset. If you go into the state exam thinking you're going to fail, that's what's going to happen. You know, an alcoholic doesn't say, I wish I can be sober. An alcoholic has to be sober in order to become sober. One taking the state exam has to go in knowing that they're going to pass. If they go in thinking otherwise, that otherwise is going to show up. How do you make them confident? How, how do you as an instructor, you're an incredible instructor, I've seen you in action, right? And I'm high on education. I've, I've been in an educational field my entire life. You're fantastic. How do you get them to where they feel like, yeah, Mac prepared me for this? What do you do? How do you do it? I. I allow them to be who they are. So one of the first things that I say in the crash course is this. Statistically, statistics show that one out of five people will pass the state exam the first time. Which means there's a probability that some of you may fail the first time. So let's just have this frank conversation. Let's take all the negative conversations you might have about failing out of this arena here. If you fail, you fail, big deal. I'll never know. The public will never know. The, the, the one person that is going to know is you, and you're the one that's going to decide whether you're going to continue moving forward with your goals and dreams, or whether you're gonna have this one failure stop you. It's the mindset that allows us to progress. And that's where I really focus on. The other, the other thing that I always say in class is this. You know more than you think you do. Oh, I like that. You know more than you think you do. Right. But the, the, and, and, the, and my job in the crash course is to take the veils that you've put on your knowledge such that you have now direct access to your knowledge. So what does that mean? I start to take away the stresses that people impose on themselves. That's, that's a fantastic answer. I agree with that 100%. So let's talk about, uh, aside from mindset, let's talk about fundamentals. Um, what should they be doing to pass this state exam with your program, with our crash course? 
I guess what I'm trying to say is, how can we raise the probability of them passing? What do you recommend these students do to raise the probability of passing? What kind of advice can you give them on that? So first of all, stop how they're studying right now and jump onto a mock exam. All right. 150 question, three hour exam. Let's talk about that. So what does this crash course offer with the mock exams? What are they like? I dig it, let's go there. So the mock exams are basically live simulations of the state exam. And it prepares the student in so many different ways that rather than studying the three books. So number one, the state uses odd language. It, it is a very, I mean, even in class, as I'm reading questions, I'm stumbling over the words because it's, it, they use the vocabulary in a very weird way. So taking the mock exams is going to expose you to that. Number two, you're going to be able to implement the strategies we give you. So the strategies we give you, you just can't listen to it once and expect to be able to incorporate that into your state exam experience. You literally have to practice them. So, and majority of the students, when they take the crash course and they practice the strategies, they necessarily, they usually don't need all three hours. They usually finish the exam in 90 minutes, right? And so that, that's the other thing. Number three, you may see questions on our mock exams that are actually verbatim to the state exam. And then number four, the way our portal is set up, we, we break down the state exam for you into various topics. Now what I say is this, you take a mock exam, then you go back to the results of that exam, and then you take quizzes in those topics that you scored less than 75% in. Now you're studying that which you don't know rather than studying that which you know already. So you can focus on subjects that you aren't strong at, yeah. that you need help with, with this mock state exam, with this portal. Yep. And that's included with the crash course that U.S. Realty Training offers. Absolutely. Got it. It's brilliant. Yeah. Because it, it really, it, it takes the student from being a bull in the china cabinet to now studying with laser focus. And it's just a very efficient way of studying. Right. Let me add to that. I think that's great advice. Would I recommend the uh, test taker doing the mock test taker, the one who's doing our back-end portal uh, mock state exam do is, if they can get 80% five times, if they can get 80% five times on one of our mock state exams, they're gonna go into that state exam with the Department of Real Estate ready to rock this. Uh, Absolutely. You know, because I believe our mock state exams, let's assume they take it the first time and they only get a 30%. So what, you're on your way there. Do it again. Like you said, the language becomes familiar. The next time you take the state exam, mock state exam, you'll get a 50%, and then you'll get a 70%. Now this vocabulary, like you said, is now becoming extremely familiar. So once you get to the 80, 90%, do that five times. Get that score of at least five times, you'll be fantastic. Absolutely. You brought up a good point on the odd way the state exam with the Department of Real Estate um, presents their material. What do you mean by odd? So they may use double negatives in, oh, in a question, uh, right? I remember those. It may be a double negative, or they might sneak in an and that the reader may not see at the very first. And because they're not familiar with the way the state exam is constructed, they may skip over that word and select the wrong answer. Right. They also do, I recall, they use a lot of except. What if the following are, are true Except, correct. But the brain focuses on true, when in reality, when they throw in the except, they just want the false answer. But we can't. We're focused on the true answers. Uh, so you're right. There's a lot of tricky questions, uh, and you go over that in your class, do you? Absolutely. Um, yeah, we go over questions in our class that are actual questions on the state exam, and and we dissect them as well. You know. To me, this portal is incredible, man. You know, people don't realize the topics that in which it's broken down to, how vital. And I mean, that's that's the one comment I get after the class. Like, had you not broken the state exam down, 
I probably would have studied it as a general right rather than now knowing okay I'm I'm lagging in this I'm lagging in this oh I'm lagging in this but it's only eight percent of the test so I'm not really gonna stress out on that so Max somebody who's studying on their own right now they don't have a crash course they have no other support regarding their academics for this exam and they're trying to do it on their own. They're utilizing only textbooks. Now, you and I both know that's very minimal. There's so many other resources out there. What other type of resources does our portal have for a student who wants to study on their own? Well, a, a couple of things about that. So the portal itself is a brilliant piece of software because not only does it have unlimited practice exams, so you can take, you'll never take the same mock exam twice, unlimited. It gives you the results as a whole for the exam, but then it also breaks down the exam topics such that it tells you what you scored per topic because one of the advantages of taking a crash course at US, US Realty is, is that we break down the state exam by topics and we, get, we let you know the, uh, by importance or percentage what topics you need to really focus on. Um, so that, that in itself is, is a huge advantage. The other thing is we give you definitions. So there's an area in the portal where you type a word in and it'll pop up the definition. We give you about 300 flashcards. I always say in class, flashcards are your best friend. They're your best friend. That's a great tip because that's where the memorization comes in with the flashcards. Absolutely, the flashcards. And then, you know, but what I would say, the second half of that answer is this. I, I, I don't put any value judgments on someone trying to do real estate on their own. The difference between someone doing real estate on their own or studying for the state exam on their own versus maybe taking a crash course is, is that the crash course system, we have statistics to show it works. whereas the individual, the way they may be studying, we don't have statistics to show it works. Right. So taking the crash course is really going, is really your shortest pathway from point A to point B. It's not about working hard, it's about working smarter. And that's the good thing about your class, that not only are they getting these, and with the backend portal, are they getting all these terms and vocabulary words and uh, mock state exams, but they have a live person who, if they have a question regarding material, they can say, Mac, they can raise their hand and say, hey, Mac, can you explain this in detail? What is escrow again? Hey, Mac, what is a title report again? So the advantage of a crash course for such minimal investment, I mean, the, the investment is minimal. I, I want to say it's $150, give or take. To have all, this, all, this, uh, all these resources and a human being who's been in the business in the real estate world for so many years, 10 years, ten years has seen it all. Yeah. Oh, what a great advantage. Now, Mac, we know they're going to see a lot of questions regarding practice, a lot of questions regarding the principal's material, and they're going to get a lot of questions regarding the electives. Um, what do you think is the most challenging uh, topic, subject for the students? I, I think the, the topic that students have the biggest fear in, it's not the most difficult, but the biggest fear in is finance because they've made these conversations up about themselves. Like, I'm not good in math, I'm not good with numbers. And so when we enter that, into that topic, they're bringing in their own baggage. And I constantly remind them, you do realize this is a story you made up and you believe. <laughs> there's no such thing as someone that's bad at numbers. There's, there's no such, it's, it's a story. Right. So, and, and I think that's the prevailing theme throughout the crash course, is, is that whatever stories you've made up about yourself are not true. And you saying, you saying to yourself, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, I always get, I'm not a good test taker. And I say to, to that specific student, well, who said you're not a good test taker? Well, back when I was in first grade, and then it becomes a whole therapy session, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, they realize, oh, wow, it's a story that I made up about myself. So how do you switch that in their brain? How do you, Mac, as, a, as an instructor, say, get it out of your head. You are a good test taker. You can do this. It's not a matter of me switching something on. It's almost like 
me identifying a blind spot. Mm -hmm. So one of my teachers used to always say this, you don't know what you don't know until someone brings it out in front of you. And then you, then you can tackle that conversation on your own. But until you know that you have that conversation, it can be a blind spot for you. Let's go back to the finance part because that is pretty crucial. I, I've had the same experience with my students. They come in thinking finance, oh no, I can't do this. There's no way I'm gonna be able to answer the finance questions. And the finance questions aren't so much calculations. It's just knowing about a lender. What is a underwriter? Uh, again, terms, it's not really calculations. What's your recommendation if by chance they do get a, a question on the state exam that mm -hmm. is calculation? What's your recommendation on it? Let me, let me preface this, conver uh, this answer first. So on the sales exam, it's 150 questions. You've got to get 105 right. So what we say in class is 105 is 100%. So given that, that student, that one person, can act, does have room to guess on at least 30 questions, if not more, maybe 35 questions. So if they come across a, ma a mathematical equation, skip it. Uh, answer it towards the end of the class, knowing that if they don't know the answer, they can always guess and still have room to pass the state exam. Yeah, I like that advice because the math question, which may take them five minutes to figure out, has the same value as the next question, which might be a term question, and they can answer it like that. Mm -hmm. Great advice. So you would say, if it's, a, if it's a long calculated question, skip it, get back to it, and if you still don't know it towards the end, take a stab at it. Yeah. Guess. Yeah. Great advice. So somebody got their uh, three certificates, right? They earned them, they're excited. When should they start studying for the uh, for their actual state exam? Should they sign up for a crash course immediately? Should they start studying immediately? Should they wait closer to the date of the state exam? What's your recommendation? So my recommendation first is to apply for the state exam. Okay. So once you have your applications in and you've paid the fees and so forth, then it's a waiting game to get the state exam date. The moment they pass the course, what I always say on their last night with me is to start taking the mock exams. Just immediately get into the mock exams and just familiarize yourself with that. The one thing that I always say is, if I put a student into a state exam the day after they graduated, they probably fail. Why? Because they haven't grown that muscle to focus for three hours. It, it is a three hour exam. And you just don't take the state exam thinking, oh, I can focus for three hours. So I immediately have them go into this gym and, and really strengthen that endurance to focus for three hours. Taking the mock exams is going to be crucial. So I always say, take the mock exams as soon as you graduate. How about taking notes? I know in my classes, I've seen several students they take notes like crazy, Mac. They're, and I, I'm like, whoa, pump the brakes. I can see smoke coming off your paper. You're, you're, you're writing so much. I said, relax. Sit back and enjoy the show, meaning just absorb stuff. But they refuse. They think uh, learning for them, which is fine, they learn better when they write a whole bunch of uh, vocabulary down. What's your take on studying for the state exam with notes? Or should they take notes or not? What's the best way? I, I think that's a personal preference. But what I will say is this. Study what you don't know. Don't study that which you know. And I think that's the mistake many students have, is, is that they study those, thing, those topics that they know already, rather than focusing on what they don't know. That's where the mock exams come into play. The mock exams will show that specific person where they're lagging and where they need to place their focus. All right, now speaking of the mock exams, these mock exams have mock questions that uh, are very similar, as close as we can get to the ones similar to the state exam. I want you to visualize yourself in the classroom, uh, Mac. You're, you're ready to take, you're ready to give instruction on a crash course, right? You walk in there and you're ready, and hopefully the students in front of you are ready. On these uh, PowerPoints that you present to the students, do you guys go over any questions that might be on the state exam? Absolutely. You do that during the crash course also? During the crash course, we go over questions that may be on the state exam. And usually we have, you know, 
sprinkled throughout the, the class those who have failed this exam once before, twice before, and who have already taken an exam, and they may share in the middle of class, oh yeah, that question was on my state exam. Mm. So they'll literally point out to the rest of the class, take spe specific notes on that one specific question. Wow. Speaking of your, your students who reach back to you, um, what's, uh, what's their feedback on your crash course? Do you get people contacting you after taking the state exam? Yeah, I probably get like maybe a dozen texts and emails really? a week saying, hey Mac, just wanted to let you know, passed the state exam, and I probably wouldn't have passed without taking your crash course. So, you know, I, I appreciate those. That's what I actually, that's why I love doing the crash course, is right. to receive those texts and emails. Yeah, you do a great job. I mean, you have hundreds of positive reviews. Mac, I want to go back to the classroom again. So in the classroom, you guys go over academics, right? Learning the material. You said you also share laughter. That's important in the classroom. One factor I want to discuss is motivation. Do you consider yourself a motivator when you're in that classroom? You got the academic side covered. You want them to have some fun, and you bring laughter. Yeah. How important is motivation? How important is it for you to say, you know what, you can do this? So motivation, I think, is key. Because motivation will pull you through, not just for the state exam, but it's going to pull you through real estate when there is a hurricane around you and you have nothing to hold on to but your motivation. I think motivation in itself places the person in front of the line. We're so used to, in these days, not putting ourselves in the front of the line. But real estate is that one industry that forces you to put yourself in the front of the line. And it, it comes about through motivation. I, I think that's, that's a fundamental building block. Now that's, now that's self-motivation. How does Mac motivate his students? I, th I think I motivate my students through the stories that I've gone through, right? I, I share my whole experience of through real estate. Um, I share my experiences as far as what has happened to me in my personal life. Um, well, like one of the points I always say to students is this, there's nothing noble about working 80 hours a week. There's nothing noble about that. And I bring up the, the example of my father who at 63 years old, had a massive heart attack and passed away. Left my brother and I at, when I was 30. He worked seven days a week. Now he provided my brother and I with a fantastic childhood. But no one at his funeral ever said to me and my brother, gosh, we really need to thank your father for working seven days a week. Hmm. It's, it's stories like that that I share in, in the class that will hopefully bring some insight into how they're going to be building their real estate companies, how they're going to be studying through for the state exam. You really want to help these people. Absolutely. Yeah, I could, I could, I could feel it, I could see yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we're very proud to have you in front of our students to get them to the next stage in life that they really want to be in. Um, let's talk about those who are in your class and are potentially or possibly taking a crash course with somebody else. Can, can you take multiple crash courses? Uh, how does that work out? I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I, I have many students that come into my class and say, oh, I'm taking so-and-so's crash course as well as yours. And I say to them, point blank, stop it. Stop it. Choose one school or the other. Every school has their own pathway. We're all going up this mountain. Every school has their own pathway to get to the top of that mountain. You start to take two schools, you're going to get conflicting processes, you're going to get conflicting terminology, and it's just going to make yourself more miserable. So if you're going to dedicate yourself to a crash course, just stick to one school and one process. Hey, Mac, it seems that the U.S. Realty Training Crash Course is is a holistic approach, has a holistic approach to real estate studying, right? We have a whole bunch of stuff to offer. Let's, let's review them. If you could share with us again, what are the main points that this crash course consists of? So the crash course consists of not only the portal itself. The portal in itself is well worth the, the crash course fee. 
aside from the, 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 the classes. But the portal itself, it offers unlimited tests. It, give, it breaks down the results for you in a manner in which you understand and you see where you're at in this game called state exam. It gives you a, an area for definitions. So if you're ever stuck in your reading and you need to know a definition, we have that technology to where all you need to do is type in that word and, and a definition pops out. And then we give you 300 car, um, flashcards. I mean, those four or five tools that I've just listed are invaluable. And now what are the uh, advantages of actually being in your class? That's great behind the scenes, which they can have that portal, that personal student portal. Fantastic, I highly believe in it. Now they're in your class, what advantages are there? So in class, it's almost like having a coach. Oh, you know, it's almost like having a coach. Like, and anyone that wants to become better at what they're doing, they have a coach. Michael Jordan, when he was playing basketball, he had five coaches. But I think coming into a crash course, you're coming into a setting in which someone is willing to coach you, to, show, to maybe point, uh, take a flashlight and say, this is where you need to focus. This is where you need to focus. And for those who think, well, I'm studying enough, maybe that flashlight that I point to you is saying, you're overstudying. You need to stop overstudying. It could, it could be that point right there. So it's one of those situations where it is a coach, coaching type of situation that a student walks into with crash course. But I think more importantly too are the strategies we give you in the crash course. The strategies, absolutely. I've had students have taken the, the state exam four times, five times and have failed. They take our crash course, boom, they pass. Nice. Any final advice for those who are watching this? I mean, we have some people right now watching this who are one step away. I'm talking passing that state exam will change their life. Changed my life for, oh my God, changed. Again, I was a school teacher making 30,000 a year, and then I passed the state exam, got into real estate, and my life changed. There are a lot of people in that position right now. They're knocking on the door of, let me in, I wanna go ahead and conquer the world. Any last advice you can give these people who are that one step away, passing a state exam, to having wonders in their life? I think first of all, n number one, they have to realize they've been given a gift. If real estate was that easy, you'd see a lot more people in it. But you don't. You, you, see, you see a minimal amount of people in the real estate industry practicing real estate, real estate and being and thriving in it. So I think, n number one, realize you've been given a gift. Realize the industry you're getting into is one in which you can make one year's worth of salary in 30 days. There's not too many industries that can claim that. And you're not exaggerating, this is the truth. Yeah, so they've been given a gift. I would say go into the state exam knowing that A, you chose to, to this industry, and B, the state exam is not a test, but more of a task. You need to get your real estate license in order for you to get to the next level. Oh, I like that. Let me repeat that. It's not a test, it's a task. It's a task. Got it. So take that testing, take that testing pressure off of you. You're gonna get your license when you get your license. All there's to it. Man, I love it. I love yeah. it. Hey, Mac, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, man. It's invaluable. You are an, a fantastic instructor. Uh, thanks for explaining the portal. Thanks for explaining to us what's involved in the classroom. I love the way you said the academics, the laughter, the motivation. It's all important. You're the best. We appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Robert. And uh, we'll see you in the next crash course in front of all of our students. Absolutely. Thank you.